Hello guys, today we're going to study a little bit about the civilization of ancient Greece. Greece is on the continent of Europe, it's towards the southeast portion of that continent, and it's on the coast of the Mediterranean Sea. Seas are curious things. As we learn more about bodies of water, we're going to learn that seas are just regions of water. A sea could be part of an ocean, like the South China Sea or the Bering Sea. Those are both part of the Pacific Ocean. A sea could even be part of another sea. For example, the Aegean Sea off the coast of Greece is part of the Mediterranean Sea. We could say that Greece is on the Mediterranean Sea, but saying it is next to the Aegean Sea is more specific. The Mediterranean is what we call an intercontinental sea. That means it is between continents. It's between the continent of Africa on the south, it has Europe on the north, and it has Asia on the east. Most of Greece is a peninsula. A peninsula is a piece of land that is surrounded by water on three sides. To the right, to the east of that Greek peninsula is the Aegean Sea. This is between the modern countries of Greece and Turkey. To the left, to the west of the Greek peninsula, is the Ionian Sea. This is between the modern countries of Greece and Italy. The land of Greece has many hills and mountains with a long, rocky coastline. Because its mainland is a peninsula and it has so many islands, Greece actually has the longest coastline of any European country. Unfortunately, Greece has poor soil. Because of all the hills and rocks, the rocky soil is not good for farming. You can't farm on rocks. Better soil comes from river valleys. When rivers flood, they deposit silt. Silt is bits of rocks and minerals that are broken down larger than clay but smaller than sand. Silt is important for agriculture. Silt promotes air circulation in the soil as well as water retention, being able to hold on to water once it's been absorbed. Greece's rocky soil made it hard for plants to grow roots to absorb nutrients. The rocks themselves don't provide nutrients for the plants. And plants also need organic matter in the soil. Organic matter is plants and animal tissue that's broken down, decomposing, and giving back some of those nutrients to the soil that another plant will be able to use. Remember, soil isn't just broken down rocks. As with any civilization, the Greeks had to adapt to their environment. The Greeks had many hills and mountains and rocky coastlines that they had to deal with, so they couldn't rely on farming as much as some civilizations. Instead, they adapted to life on the sea, life with fishing, life with more fish fishing than farming. With a lot of coastline and islands, it made sense for them to build more ships and start traveling across the sea, trading with people for what they needed, and fishing to get the food they needed. Those city-states had their own government, and they defended themselves behind a fortress or a wall. Now let's talk about climate. Climate is weather conditions in a region over a long period of time, something that you would expect as the normal status for that region. The climate of Greece is actually pretty windy. Wet, mild winters, and hot, dry summers. This varies a bit though. Because of all the mountains, if you're higher up in the mountain, it can be much colder during the winter. Greece can also be quite windy during the summer. The Meltemi wind blows south down the Aegean Sea. In the Ionian Sea, the summer winds are called the maestro winds. Greek culture has grown and shrunk over time. The earliest Greek culture was on the island of Crete. It was called the Minoan civilization. This started around 2000 BCE, and we know a bit about it from the artifacts that we've found. We still have a lot to learn about the Minoans. The Minoans used a language called Linear A, which we still haven't figured out. We don't know what they wrote about, so we interpret their history from their artifacts. We also know a little bit about their history from what other civilizations wrote about them. For example, the legend of the Minotaur in the labyrinth is based on the island of Crete. The Minoan civilization happened during what we call the Bronze Age. Bronze is a metal alloy created between the two elements, copper and tin. It's actually the first alloy that humans ever made. Now, early humans discovered that they could melt copper and tin out of certain rocks. If you got the rock hot enough, certain metals would melt out of it. Then you could use those metals for creating whatever tools or instruments that you needed. One rock, this malachite, is a copper ore. That means that it has copper inside it, and if you heat it to the right temperature, 
that copper will melt out. Tin was another metal found in rocks. You could melt it out and you could use it. But when you mixed molten copper and tin together, you got a metal called bronze. Bronze is stronger than both the copper and tin metals by themselves. And it was still easy to mold and shape. People made weapons and armor, but they also made tools for agriculture. When the Minoans began using bronze, armor, and weapons, it gave them an advantage over other tribes. Other tribes were still using stone tools. In some cases, those other tribes were using copper, but copper is not as strong as bronze. Based on the levels of technological innovation, we divide time periods for humans into the Stone Age, the Bronze Age, eventually the Iron Age, based on when we were able to use those technologies. The next Greek civilization was the Mycenaeans. These people lived on the southern tip of the Greek peninsula around 1600 BCE. These people actually spoke and wrote in the language Greek. It lasted several hundred years. We know a lot about it because we not only have artifacts, but we have written histories in languages that we understand. The Mycenaeans were eventually destroyed by invading tribes. Then, around 800 BCE, small city-states started to form. These were cities that could be a large city or a small city, but they started to gather themselves, gather their resources to protect themselves. They were isolated on islands and separated by hills and mountains. Instead of having one government that controlled all of them, it was easier for them to develop smaller city-states that were associated but independent. It was kind of like a country, but on a very small scale. They built fortresses, they built walls. Some of them were larger than others, but they were independent. They shared Greek culture, they shared Greek language, so they had that in common with other Greek city-states, but they were independent, self-governing entities. During this period of Greek culture expanding from the peninsula to the islands, it spread across the sea to other parts of the Eastern Mediterranean. Greek culture, as it spread through the Eastern Mediterranean, building colonies, establishing city-states, and it reached the coastal populations of Europe and Africa and Asia. In the meantime, the civilization of the Romans started to grow and build and spread out through the Mediterranean. By 146 BCE, the Romans had conquered all of the Greek city-states. Greek culture was adopted, it was incorporated into the Roman culture, but the time of the ancient Greeks being a major civilization had come to an end.